All right, folks, well, I didn't really plan on recording this just because I was in a hurry, but um, was able to last minute get a bunch of parts together and um, bring them on down here to Family Finishing, which is St. Louis Plating. So just another little step in the process of getting a lot of this miscellaneous parts finished. So you name it, it's in here. Had to do some last minute repairs. Hopefully they can finish that up. I, just, I was running out of time, so we'll see. <laughs> this was literally pitted so bad. These things, if you're a Corvette person at all, you know these things are freaking expensive. So hang tight, let's see what they got to say. Holy mackerel. It's an old St. Louis city building. This place has probably been here forever trying to see if they'll let me come in and show you guys share a little bit about how they chrome and prep and all that good stuff so hang tight yeah i think family finishing has been around for 1953 here and, and now it's st louis plating i don't know i think it's represented twice or two different ways and i think the son bought it from the father but here this is what i'm <laughs> this is what i'm looking at that's all it is, big old two-story right, building. So Rodney is the son. His father owns a business. Rodney's cool as hell. Uh, he's gonna let me come through and <clears throat> just kind of document, you know, kind of the process. So I've never been in a plating uh, warehouse or company. I've heard all kinds of stories about it and how it's regulated. So um, I'm interested to see their prep process and all that stuff. So he's gonna take all these parts. I mean, you name it. I got it. And he's going to selectively uh, give me an estimate as to what he can get away with not having to prep. Because this is a driver. It's not a, a, it's not a super duper show car or anything like that. So, anyways, hang tight. He's getting a car. All right. Let's go. Probably a better day to do it now that we got a couple of people out, not everybody walking around. Running around. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, man. You know what? Uh, let me go ahead and grab a ticket real quick. And, uh... So, the process, from what I understand, is they go up and they prep. They strip it, bead blast it, polish it to a mirror finish, and then they do copper, coat it with copper, and then nickel. So hang tight. Maybe right, I got you that. somebody come in once a month and sweep and clean up. Yeah. And it's been about a month, and everything just oh, we spotless are. within a day. Look, I did. Uh, I owned a commercial powder coating company. Yeah. In a 50-year-old building. Uh, and it was you couldn't it was one day and then it would look the same as it did exactly. the day before. Yeah. These are the uh the lathes where we do all the polishing uh, anywhere from like buffing to grinding to whatever we need to do to get all the pits out and okay get get it to look like a mirror. And these are all belt driven. <laughs> it's the only way to do this is to absolutely rock out. This is something I'm working on now. Okay, so you do you mechanically strip these, or do you dip them and completely? We chemically strip them in a sulfuric acid at about six or seven volts, wired up to like a copper rack okay. or a copper hook, and we strip it down to bare metal. Like this is bare metal, and then we kind of blast the inside, just any junk or residue. And this is all for adhesion, or is it all just to again clean it up? To clean it up, so nothing okay. comes out in plating. And okay. So the plating sticks better okay and then we just something like this we start out like right now i'm starting out this is a a 120 belt wheel so it's a square wheel okay and that's just for straight grinding like okay this was like a cast iron yep and i was getting it down to this gotcha 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 and i'm kind of going this is the first process roughing everything out yep like this was a cast as you can see so you're just cleaning it up making it more presentable yeah, i'm roughing it out <clears throat> are you chroming these yeah all this is going to get chrome okay all right so i'm pretty much starting at a 120 and i'm going to work my way down to where all this is going to look like a mirror okay and then it's going to go downstairs and get racked up and then go through the process okay so you're not worried about this because this will all come out when you go to the next part nope i uh didn't hit this on that because it's flat and i'll hit it on that gotcha because that will gouge flat gotcha you want to use it on like angle 
pieces like that. Gotcha. If you use that on a flat piece, you'll see dial juice. So you gotcha. hit it on a flat belt. Okay. Wow. So like I'll rough it out and then I'll hit it on a 120 and rough out all the flat pieces. Okay. And uh, then I'll come back and throw uh, like a, a lead wheel on, which is like a 180. Okay. And I got all different sizes. Sure. They're all getting in all the different grooves. Nooks and crannies and stuff like that. And something like this, I have to use a little air tool. Yep. And then a small lead wheel to go in wow. there and smooth it out. Okay. And then I come back and might throw a, like a 400 grit, go over everything, and then buff. Buff. Which is using like that red. Oh, wow. That's for like steel or that air flow down there that's like a Okay, so what do you, okay, so you have your rouge and stuff like that. Yeah, you just put some on, hit it for a minute. Okay. Put some more on, keep hitting it till it's done. Okay. Wipe it all off and then you're done. All right. Same thing with that, but that's more for like aluminum. So it's not grass. as aggressive, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, same thing, huh? Yep, and different compounds for different wheels. And gotcha. All that. And that's pretty much it for prep up here, right? Yeah. So, and this is all to get it to a mirror finish before you yep. start the chemical process. It comes, get stripped. We blast it in the blaster. So you got a cabinet. Yep. And then uh, you just start out. It depends, you know, if you got to start out in much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, and then just work it down to a mirror. Okay. Wipe all the dirt off, and then it goes downstairs and gets, gets plated. Awesome. All right, so, oh, so this is like... <laughs> So you said building was built in 1916. Yeah, we've had all the wires and everything switched out about five years ago, as far as, I mean, the cables. All the cable, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, yeah, we moved in here, and, but this was the original Fry Wagner moving in storage. Oh, really? Yeah, it was yeah. one of the original wow. buildings. Yeah, that goes way back. Right yep. This is, oh, I'm sorry, nope, I just stepped on a dolly. That's like the sulfuric acid. So, so stay we away from that. Like, yeah, wire it like this. Like this had plating on it. Okay. And then we put it in there, and it gets about seven volts, and it just eats the plating off. Okay. And wow. Then you pull it out, and it's R done. Rinse it. Like that's a, a cleaner tank. So those are full of gunk. Oh, so, so you're breaking just down. So in there to get that junk broken up. And gotcha. Get them out. Gotcha. How hot are these? 120, 130 degrees. And they're just. They're heated by, is there a uh, boiler? boiler? Okay. Those are just water tanks. Water tanks to rinse. Uh, paint strip, yeah. erratic acid for getting like scale off or uh, rust. Also like an ice cube. Really? So whenever we put aluminum there, we got to make sure there's no steel inserts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grass yeah. inserts. No, nothing. What is that? Nit What's Nitric acid. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Yeah, legit. Much, yeah, we take stuff like that, get it down to bare metal, and take it upstairs, take it upstairs and upstairs. get to yeah. work. Okay. See how there's white on here? Yeah. That's chrome burnt. That just buffs right off. Really? It okay. burns here so we can get the chrome to throw deep down. Okay. It's, it buffs off in like two seconds. Gotcha. These are like the cell tanks. So after they get polished, they come down here and get racked up, however. Okay. Go in here, and if there's any polishing dirt, it breaks it down? Yeah, it falls off. It makes it to where it falls off. Straight up falls off. Yeah, or like, we got to scrub it if it's okay. really bad. Okay. And this is the electrical cleaner. Okay. This is caustic soda, so we would put it on there with about six or seven volts and electrical cleans it. Like um, sonic? Um, kind of just uh, like boils it off. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, All right. I don't know. Wow. It, but like if there's parts on here. Yeah. See how it sparks? Yep. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Boiling. Yep, I gotcha. Yep. So it's right now it's chemically clean. That's it. And it's DC electric, so you don't have to worry about getting it's shocked. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. <laughs> That's just water. So is this just kind of intermittent? Is it water because you dip before you go to yeah, the next? Yeah, that's just to rinse that off. Okay. The rinsing. That's just a mild acid for uh, killing whatever cleaner is left, or if you activate it on the bar, it gets any minor, minor scale or surface rust off before you plate it. Okay. Uh, this is for aluminum. This is a, a nitric, and that's a, uh, 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 a zinc aid. It kind of opens the pores on the aluminum, and that kind of closes it and puts zinc in it. So wow. you can put copper on there. 
until everything sticks better. It's not okay. like to stick aluminum. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another. just a rinse tank. For that. Right? Yeah, for that, for that. And that's the copper tank. Okay. So, so what's... Put in there, it gets copper. So once everything's prepped, cleaned, everything's 100% ready, you've got your adhesion promoting all done, mm -hmm. you go straight to copper? Yep, like uh, water. Depending on what the part is, you had copper. And depending on what the part is, it could be in there 30 seconds or 15 minutes. Okay. Then you bring it out of there, you rinse it again, and then you stick it in one of the tanks. And this is for chrome? No, this is nickel. Or nickel. All right, yep, so like, uh, so copper, then nickel. And then the chrome tank at the very end. Wow. Like, uh, this is a dull tank for like satin. Oh, okay. And this is a bright tank. You see how the bar is moving? Yeah. And that's the super bright tank. That's probably what like your pieces are going to go in. Okay. That's All right. just that super bright. So why is, is this agitation? Is that what this is? Yeah got to have some type of agitation and movement when you plate. Okay. And this is a slow one for like aluminum because you can't put plating on fast on aluminum or it doesn't want to plate. So you got to put it on slow. Interesting. Yeah. Every wow. Metal's yeah. No kidding. What are, what's, what this is, this is, uh, see this, that's a uh, nickel. Oh, so you literally. Yeah. We stuck nickel in there and it, it breaks it down and it, it, it makes like an electrical charge when you put it on here yeah. our electrical connection okay and as it's making a connection it's breaking it down and putting it evenly on it's the dispersing part. it throughout the yeah. tank wow okay yeah. all right same with same yeah. with uh, copper same with the copper there's copper balls okay the difference with the chrome is what is this on what is just from solution dripping okay <laughs> this whole the platform is crazy yeah the chrome if the chrome's too hard, you can't do that. So we buy it kind of like flakes, like fish food. Okay. And we mix it in the solution. We have lead anodes. So the lead anode, the lead grabs the chrome and puts it on the actual part. So your parts would be in here for like a half hour, 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. But they only go in the chrome maybe 15, 20 seconds. Really? So it's just a flash on them. Oh, wow. Okay. If you do anything more than that, it's considered hard chrome, which would be for like your cylinders or hydraulics. Okay. With a lot of pressure. Okay. They put hours on it and then they mill it down and it lasts forever because it's chrome so hard. Okay. So, can you help me understand why people, why a lot of companies don't want to chrome high temperature metals anymore? Probably because it keeps the heat. Okay. I'm thinking. So, I, it was explained to me that the reason is, is that you need a lot of copper. In order to... It depends. If it's aluminum, yeah. Like, uh, for instance, like uh, aluminum rims. Yeah. If you don't have a lot of copper on there, like, if the plating would flake off. So okay. you put a thick layer of what they call acid copper. Okay. It's a thick layer of copper, and it helps it from not popping because that aluminum is so soft. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Other than that, it's just a matter of getting getting all of the chemicals or getting all the prep in all the crevices... That's really the, yeah, it's the all liability. The prep, really. Okay. Yep. All right. So these are just rinse tanks. Yep. That's just rinse tank. And here's the actual chrome tank. And like I said, when stuff goes in there, it's probably 15 really seconds, quick. give or take. So what is this? What is chrome actually? Like, it's just a, a natural metal. It's just really, really hard and dense. That's why chrome doesn't. It's kind of somewhat scratch resistant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay kind of why they invented chrome because everything used to be nickel plated but nickel tarnishes and yep. scratches it fades yeah. and you put a layer of chrome on it and it's good forever yeah okay yeah it doesn't tarnish fade or scratch so how how much are you guys regulated in running this plant is this all chrome also no this is a uh, metal by uh not metal by sulfate all right folks real quick i just wanted to chime in here kind of ran over that question about regulation and that was probably one of the more interesting things that I was curious about while I was there. So I spoke to Rodney's dad and um, we talked about um, who regulates, what are the regulations and how stringent it is. And essentially says it's not that bad. He's like, yes, the EPA has some rules and basically those rules regulate how concentrated those tanks can be because if they're too concentrated, they emit uh, these gases into the atmosphere that are harmful and you can inhale them and get cancer or something to that effect right so if you go to the government's website the epa's website you'll see there's a 30 fa 34 35 page 
uh, filing on all the different reasons for the different kinds of chroming and the breakdown of what's regulated and all that stuff. So anyways, they test their tanks once a week. They make sure that they're not over diluted. They make sure that they're not over concentrated. Um, they follow the rules and that's kept them in business. And that's pretty much the name of the game. So, you know, he mentioned that there used to be a bunch of companies in St. Louis of which he, you know, kind of mentioned that it didn't appear that they played, you know, they played nice. They didn't follow the rules. They try to get by like, you know, we used to back in the day where we just dump the chemicals out in the backyard and, you know, whatever, you can't do that. Another big piece is MSD doesn't want you dumping them down the drain. So they do, you know, regular water tests. They submit those to labs and those labs submit those to MSD. So anyways, they're a traditional chrome company, chrome plating company. They do decorative chrome. Um, they don't specialize in hard, hard chrome plating. That's more for industrial and <clears throat> machining and stuff like that. But uh, you can Google all that stuff and look it up. It's pretty interesting. But anyways, back to the video. I just uh, wanted to share kind of the answer that I got because um, I think that's a pretty big piece of it. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Keep sticking around. Almost pretty much done. kills from solution. So when you bring it out of there, you dunk it in here. Uh, it kills it. Neutralizes. Yeah. Okay. And then that's just the hot water tanks we're rinsing, and then you clean them up, take them down, and wipe them in the back. Whatever. Okay. Yep. How often you got to change these tanks out? Uh, it really depends. Water uh, and everything? Technically, the nickel tanks, we try to empty them out like every six months and dig them out and do all that you know depending on time okay all but right. like tanks like this really whenever like maybe once a year really really stuff like okay that. i know for when we on our in our wash tanks for powder coating mm -hmm. we take all industrial so they get build up nasty yeah. the spray heads would constantly fail and we'd have to go through and uh, replace a lot of parts every probably two to three months. It was kind of a nightmare. So, man, this is awesome. Thank you for yeah, no bringing me back. And see all the different racks for everything. There. Yeah, no, this is intense. It's a lot of... Only probably about half of them. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure, at least in St. Louis, from what I know, you guys are the only ones offering yeah, this up, a, man. There's a couple, like American and Tice, but they're more... Uh, like brass, silver, gold. Yeah. Like antiques. So how cool is that, right? I mean, it's I kind of nerd out on some of that stuff. So this is uh, this is where I'm at downtown. All right. So yeah, family finishing. Um, I called these guys a few months ago, and uh, super nice, really like really great customer service as far as taking uh taking the time to answer my questions clearly they just let me walk through their um through their shop but uh but i talked to these guys a, a few months ago they took the time to walk through some general pricing and and uh, i just kind of been biding my time to get down here and drop this stuff right, off well so. he's gonna call me i think on monday or tuesday hopefully with some pricing i'm really excited to share kind of that but i'm my work isn't going to get touched till September, so that's how far behind they are. But clearly, I'm not ready to install it all. Just thought I'd share this little trip with you guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.